Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about why I traveled 4,200 miles just to fix a singular problem, which is, of course, my phone. And um, so what actually happened was when I arrived to Malaysia on like two months ago, I lost my Chinese SIM card. For those who don't know, a Chinese SIM card or your Chinese phone number is essentially your lifeline in China. The reason I say this is because, uh, well, my phone number is bound to all of my bank accounts. It's bound to my WeChat, which is basically like your super program that is used in order to order food, in order to get taxis. It's like your Uber, your Grab, your everything, all combined into one application. And that was also bounded to my phone number. And then, um, yeah, if I just needed to do any bank transfers or anything that needed a, uh, a phone number, well, I just couldn't do any of that, which was very, very troublesome. But at the time, I was in Malaysia, so it wasn't a big deal because I was like, okay, you know, it's fine. I've got a Malaysian number. I can still do whatever I need to do in Malaysia. But the moment I came back to China, we had a lot of problems because we needed to get that SIM card back. And well, the SOP or the standard operating procedure over here is incredibly complicated. So, you know, first of all, I landed in Shanghai because, you know, we were here for my dad's birthday and all of that stuff. But I went to the Shanghai's China Telecom and I was like, hey guys, I lost my SIM card. I'd like to get a new one. You know, I just want my, I just want my number back so that, you know, I can function like a normal human being and be able to do all the things that I need to do in order to function normally. And well, they were like, oh, sorry, the SIM card that you got, you got this back in 2012 in Shenzhen. And well, so I had to fly all the way to Shenzhen, which I did yesterday. And um, guess what happened? There was a typhoon that hit yesterday as well. Can you believe it? Within a span of a week, I've been hit by two typhoons, both at the same time where I take off. When my flight is flying, there's a freaking typhoon. And so I, I land in Shenzhen at like 12 p.m. No, 1 p.m. I think. So I was supposed to fly at 8.40 a.m., but it got delayed until like 10.50 a.m. Then we finally took off. We landed in Shenzhen. Everything was fine. Shenzhen weather was fantastic. Super sunny, super nice. And then I had to take the cab to the closest um, China mobile in order to get my new SIM card or get it replaced. And um, so we got there. We got to the China mobile and they're like, they're looking at my ID card. And they're like, sir, are you sure you're Caro? I'm like, yes, I'm sure I'm Caro. And they're like, okay, your ID card number is wrong. So could you answer a couple security questions? I was like, yeah, of course. I got every security question wrong. I literally got every single security question wrong. And they're like, do you know your PIN number? I was like, yeah, sure. I got that wrong too. <laughs> so I must have went in looking like the most sus guy ever because I set all of these security questions, all of these uh, things back in 2012. I don't remember what the heck I used to back in 2012. Apparently it's not the same numbers as I use now. And so um, everything was wrong. And the reason why my ID card number was wrong was because, you know, back in 2012, that's quite a while ago, we've already switched ID cards. Usually ID cards, you have to change them like every 10 years or so. And uh, so, you know, I've changed my ID card twice already in that span. And because of that, the number, the last digit goes up by one number. So for our ID cards, we have like a string of digits, then you have like a little bracket, and then you have two digits within that bracket. And then those numbers go up by a digit every time you renew it. So I renewed my ID card four times already. Um, hopefully I didn't give away my age. But nevertheless, I refreshed it four times, so the number ends with four now. And when I registered it, well, the number ended with two. And so uh, there was an issue there. They're like, um, yeah, interesting. So, you know, I had to sit there. They, they had to verify a lot of things. I had to sign a lot of documents, just proving that, listen, guys, you have my passport. You have my ID card. You have me in person here. Yes, I am me. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it took a very long time, but they finally were like, all right, you know, fudge this. We don't have we're, we're not paid enough to, to deal with this crap. So they just let me through. And so after all that hassle, I finally got my SIM card back. So my phone is finally activated. I have my number. I can bind my new bank account and all that stuff onto my uh, onto my WeChat. I can do like the mobile banking and all of that is all good to go. 
Um, so there was actually another reason why I had to go here was because um, my bank account was actually expiring. It actually expires in like two months for uh, this year. So I needed to get a new bank card, or I think it's like a debit card or credit card or whatever. Like, you know, one of those cards were going to expire, so we needed to renew it. And uh, so normally, if you want to keep the same number, it does take them seven working days in order to renew the bank account or the, uh, the debit card, sorry. And so I was like, all right, you know, I'm going to be gone in seven days, especially seven working days since my flight is on Tuesday. So I was like, listen, I can't do that. Is there some is there some way to do it like today? I need a new card today. And they're like, oh, yeah, we can do that. But you will lose your bank account number like it'll change or the debit card number will change. And I was like, you know, that's fine. Not a big deal. What I didn't think about was that debit card was bound to like all of my online payments. So because I changed the number, all of my online payments, like everything just went offline, like instantly, because it was like, well, we didn't get your monthly payments or oh, your payment th thing is incorrect. So they immediately shut down like everything. <laughs> and I was like, oh no. <laughs> so so that, that, was, that was another huge ordeal, but it was actually a very easy fix. All I needed to do was get my phone number back, my registered phone number. So um, for those who don't know, in China, in order to get a registered phone number or just get any SIM card, you have to bind it to a passport or you have to bind it to an ID card to a person, right? And um, so, you know, that was why it was so important that I flew to Sunzen to get this phone number reactivated. And um, another thing that I also n realized or just I totally forgot to mention was when I first got to China Mobile and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I need to activate this card or I'm trying to get back a lost card because I lost my SIM card, right? Um, I was actually blacklisted. So what actually happened was back in 2018, we were still doing business. And like that was when China was really, really strict on like, oh, SIM cards aren't something that you can just open without any ID. You have to have an ID card and you have to bind it to your person. And so back then, uh, we were still doing business. We were making money. And, you know, I, I was doing my sommelier job, my full time sommelier job while running a restaurant and all of that stuff. And in 2018, we expanded to a bakery. We also, you know, we started making bread as well. And so in order to receive the money in that and for the bakery, we needed another SIM card as well as another WeChat account and another bank account. And well, obviously, I should be the one taking care of all the money, right? So I made a SIM card, I opened up a bank account, and that was literally where all the money from the bakery went to. It went into that specific account. And the reason why I needed to open a phone number for that was because, uh, you know, 2018 was like pretty much the rise of when people started using mobile transactions. So instead of just paying with cash or by card or debit or whatever, you know, people wanted to just pay by their phone through the uh, like the QR codes. You just scan it and you pay like that. And so that's why we needed an extra number. And so uh, that was when I opened up a second number back in 2018. Well, let's just say that uh, we we operated the bakery for a couple of years and then we shut it down because we were like, OK, you know, it's not really worth it. And the cost just wasn't worth it because we weren't making mad profits from the bakery. And so we just shut the entire operation down. What we didn't know, at least, you know, I wasn't thinking at the time was in order to cancel your SIM card, you can't just not pay it and it just automatically cancels. No, that puts you into bad debt. And that gives you, uh, well, that, that that's why I was blacklisted, was because that one phone number, I didn't pay the phone bill since like the end of 2018 or something. And so basically there was like a, uh, a penalty that accumulated from 2018 all the way till now, which is 2024. And so I need to settle that bad debt before I could get my original number or the one that I actually need back because that's the one that's bound to all my bank accounts. Um, so, you know, I had to pay that. Luckily, it wasn't that crazy of a debt. It was like 300 uh, RMB, which is like, that's that's like what, 30, 40 dollars or something. No, maybe like 50 dollars. So, you know, I was like, all right, sure, whatever. I paid off that debt. I'm finally off their blacklist. And then I was able to get my SIM card and everything was good and dandy. And then I needed to fly back on the same day. I needed to fly back to Shanghai. So, you know, here I am right now in Shanghai. You, you know this background. This is my room. Um, 
Yeah, remember that typhoon? It was getting worse. So literally the flight that I got booked on was like at 3.30. It got delayed till 5.30 and thank God it flew. And by the time we landed, all of the flights afterwards were all canceled. It was legitimate, just all canceled. All the flights in the Pudong airport, all canceled. And I was like, oh my goodness, Jesus Christ. Like one of you wizards or your witches out there really, really making my life super, super difficult. But nevertheless, we landed safely yesterday night and we're all good. So I just spent like the entire day traveling. And uh, my goodness, that was that was quite the ordeal. So all of this is done, right? The nightmare is over. The chaos is done, right? No more curses. No, we're not done yet. There, there's there's more to this story. Um, remember Twitch? Remember how I'm live streaming on Twitch like every day when I was in Malaysia? And then like we've taken this one week off or like one week and two days off because, uh, well, it's my dad's birthday. I'm in Shanghai, China now. And well, obviously, I'm not going to be able to stream here. Well, um, Twitch basically sent me a little email saying that, oh, you know, the US, their IRS stuff, they're changing some policies. We need you to sign a couple documents and send some verification. And they need me to verify that I am indeed Caro. So I was like, all right, fair enough. You know, what do you need? They need a scan of my passport as well as my ID card. So I'm like, okay, no problem. So I provide them with the documents and their, their AI system, or I don't know what the heck they're, they're using some system called persona or something. And it's just not able to verify my identity. It, it just keeps failing and failing and failing. And so I'm not able to get past the verification process. And I'm just like, what is going on? And uh, we're still stuck there. We still haven't resolved this issue, but I I'm sure, you know, if I just keep pestering support, we'll, we'll, we'll get through it together. We'll get through them somehow. Um, but because of that, I have to go through the entire validation process again for the affiliate program. And while I'm doing all of that stuff, it messed up my PayPal. So before, Twitch was fine. You know, I already got last month's payout. So I I'm, I'm pretty chill for now. I'm just, you know, I've got plenty of time to just sort all of this out before the next month's payout. And, um, you know, everything was set up perfectly before. It was bound to my PayPal. I got paid every month. Everything was perfectly fine. And now, <laughs> now I try to bind my PayPal account and it says that my name is wrong. Even though I'm, it's a carbon copy, I literally copy paste my name into the Twitch thing, into filling out all the details. And it says my name is wrong. <laughs> so like, literally, this trip has been insane. This this one week trip, like everything that can go wrong has pretty much gone wrong. So it's, I don't know who I upset, but I mean, I'm sorry if I upset you. It would be nice if you could unjinx me and uncurse me so that I can have smooth sailing back home. I, I swear. If there is, I heard there's actually a third typhoon coming to Shanghai. If it happens on Tuesday, the day I fly back to Malaysia, this trip is like officially cursed. It's like actually cursed. But yeah, guys, that's really just the story I wanted to share with you guys. Just like there's so many headaches I had to deal with just coming over here. Like, you know, I had a plan. I was here. I was going to deal with a lot of stuff. And so, you know, my schedule was pretty fully booked. Um, but yeah, I didn't expect it to be this hectic, but nevertheless, we are back home now. We're safe. Everything is good. We, uh, we're celebrating my dad's birthday on Monday. Actually, we, we booked a really nice omakase restaurant. It's going to be excellent. We're going to have a good meal there. And then I leave on Tuesday. So when I fly on Tuesday, fingers crossed, no typhoon, please. Please, witches and wizards out there, please bless me. No typhoon, please. And um, yeah, we finally sorted out everything except for the Twitch thing yet. Uh, we still need to figure that out. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to share in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.